Welcome to the tactical brief, the investors, speculators and traders. Today I'm going to talk about the relationship between performance and volatility. What happens to performance if volatility is high, low or just right? The question I get from my students is always, and how does volatility hit the market? And I cannot answer that question. How volatility manifests itself? When it arises, when it culminates, when it disappears? This is something for behavioral finance and I'm fairly certain in the future there will be Nobel Prizes thick on the ground for the person who's able to explain that. However, what I can show you is what happened in the past when volatility hit the market, when volatility was low or when volatility was just at the right level. I hope you find the results enjoyable and I'll see you in a second on the small screen. Before we start, let me take the opportunity to briefly introduce myself so that you have an idea who's talking to you. My name is Thorsten Roland Wegener. I'm a retired derivatives trader and if you're interested in my background, 30 years, you can pause the video, have a look for, uh, at which companies I used to work for, what I did at these companies and get a better idea why I'm talking about, uh, to you about this topic today. There are risk disclaimers as well, one in English, one in German. The German one is for my German students because uh, the majority of my students is here in Germany and everything I'm going to tell you today uh, is purely for entertainment and educational uh, purposes and shall be by no means misconstrued as investment advice and Thorsten Wegener, that's me, should have no liability in your investment decisions based on this information you see today. Thank you very much. So it's the 6th of July 2020 and what I can see at the moment in the markets reminds me pretty much of a time uh, around 2000 when we had the first dot-com bubble uh, when valuation levels were far beyond what uh, everybody expected them ever to be and we are right here again, we are in the middle of the corona crisis um, there is a recession, maybe even a depression to come and the market seems to completely ignore it so what better time to talk about volatility uh, which surely will show its ugly face in the future. The volatility is special. We want to have a look at the S&P versus the VIX from 1990 to 2020. And I love to start with a quote from Nassim Nicholas Taleb, never think that the lack of variability is stability. Don't confuse lack of volatility with stability ever. Nassim Nicholas Taleb, uh, I always call him the inventor of the black swan. Uh, you probably read one of his books. If you haven't, you should do. What's the impact of volatility versus performance? The methodology is actually quite simple. I looked at the S&P here represented through the gray line going up. Um, and what you can see above that, the little blue lines are the daily, is the daily performance of the S&P, measuring closing prices. What does that mean? Um, you simply look at the closing one day before today and you look at the closing today and then you check the percentage change we have. Is it, is it positive? Then the blue line uh, is on the positive side of the scale. If it's negative, then obviously here represented through a red arrow on uh, below the zero marker. Why do I do that? Obviously, I'm not interested in daily performance and daily volatility because I think there's too much random noise in there. So what I was trying to uh, investigate is how would one year investments over this whole period have performed in relation to the volatility of the market. And you can go in there and simply do it start every beginning of the year. So you end up over this period with 29 nice data sets, but that's not enough. So I was interested if I would invest always for one year or 252 days, that's the convention. Um, how would the performance of this one year portfolio look? That gives me the chance to end up with over uh, or roughly 7,500 different portfolios. And I've also removed uh, um, skill or dumbness out of this data set because it's purely random. How on average would the market have performed in relation to its volatility over a 30 year period if I had the chance to randomly pick any one year period and uh, buy my investment and have it lying there? So, 
the graph represents very simply where you see the green arrow. Uh, that is the performance for one year or 252 trading days. And that is measured as if I would have bought in this example here at roughly 875 in 2003 and would have sold uh, by the end of 2003 or at the beginning of 2004 at uh, 1100. And uh, the green bar now is the performance of this one year portfolio. This is what we're going to investigate for all these 7,500 portfolios over a 30 year period. And what you can already see here is the contribution of volatility to each and every one of those 252 day or one year portfolios, if volatility would be above 30 or 100. And I think uh, the slide is pretty much self-explanatory. It doesn't look good. So whenever you were invested, in the S&P with volatilities above 30, what you can see on the screen now with the contribution, the performance contribution of these above 30 volatility points investment. Um, why have I chosen the levels as I did? Obviously it's experience, but it's also something you can see in the market quite a lot. A lot of institutional funds are simply not invested at certain levels, and this is one of the reasons why they are not invested. Let's go one step further down. If we look at the profit contribute or the, uh, the, the performance contribution of uh, uh, the S&P, when volatility is between 20 and 30, you can already see a mixed picture. Yes, the, uh, the drawdowns are not as big as uh, they used to be when we only would be invested in volatilities above 30, and there's also some additional positive performance coming in. However, it's still doesn't look very enticing to uh, invest in these periods. So let's go to the period where it looks enticing to invest. And that is obviously when volatility is below 20. What you can see here already, I think it's quite impressive. It shows you portfolios where you would only be invested if volatility is below and you would not be invested if volatility is above 20. In this case, you have almost always positive performance in here, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, depending on the uh, market you're in. However, on average, you end up with positive performances if you are invested in portfolios only during the periods when volatility, in this case the VIX, is not trading above 20. If I take them all together, volatility below 20, volatility between 20 and 30 and volatility above 30 till infinity and add them all up. Obviously, it has to end up like a simple buy and hold strategy over 252 days in the S&P. And you see the big yellow line is matching the gray bars, which were representing the performance of the S&P. Let's go a little bit into the statistics because there's something quite interesting to observe. On the left in gray and on the right, uh, um, let's start with the left. On the left, you see the S&P. You see that in 80% of the time, the S&P that is the dark green uh, was up and 20% of the time, the S&P was down over this period, had negative returns over 252 day periods and positive returns over the same period. Of course, we had a bull market. Since I started working, the market actually went up all the time. Yes, you had periods that were uh, uh, a little bit more depressed, but in the meantime, if you bought something and just kept it in your portfolio, you were doing fine. So the performance on average is the famous 7.44, depending on what data you put in, could go up to 7.8. But on average, you had an average performance of all these portfolios, annual portfolios of 7.44%. And if you would have chosen the best time period out of all these 7,500, you were up by 52.22% over a year or you uh, had bad luck and you picked exactly this portfolio when the market took a dive, you were down by 66.99%. So that's the S&P if you would have been invested all the time. Now we look at the uh, red circle and that's encircling the volatility, the return of volatilities above 30, the return contribution. And that looks actually quite brutal. On average, you would have given away over six percentage points in performance. Um, the best performance you could have possibly picked was 21%. The lowest performance was 64% minus. But 95% of all this contribution that volatility is above 30 would bring to the table was a negative performance. That's why you should not be invested when volatility is above 30. Leave that to the Robin Hoods of this world um, because what they will do is short-term investments turn suddenly to very long-term investments and they're going to lose it all. 
Uh, yellow contribution, you can already see, still negative performance, not as big anymore, and still 73% of the contribution in volatility between 20 and 30 is negative. And let's directly focus in on the green circle. This is what you want to see. You have an average performance of 16.1%, and uh, almost all the uh, contribution is a positive contribution. You can see here, and the maximum downturn in all of these portfolios, the worst portfolio you could have picked when following this strategy, had minus 2.62% performance. Not too bad. So let's compare our volatilities in three very concrete approaches. What we're going to look at is one portfolio, as we've seen last, being invested in everything below 20, then one portfolio being invested in everything above uh, below 30, and one portfolio in everything in the market, uh, which is the classic buy and hold strategy. Here you can see the, uh, the S&P now plotted against the VIX, the performance of all these 7,500 portfolios. And this is obviously our undistinguished buy and hold strategy, which is matching the red bars, just to prove for me again that I've done my calculations right. And this is the portfolio if you would have always been invested if the VIX is not trading above 30 volatility points. A little bit earlier, we saw the contribution to the overall return. Now, in this case, obviously, you also own the S&P when volatility is below 20. That's why it looks better than just the profit contribution, the 30, uh, 20 to 30% bracket would have uh, brought to the performance analysis. You see here, the performance is all right. Uh, you can stay invested, but you still have drawdown periods, which look, uh, especially in the financial crisis and in the aftermath of the uh, internet bubble, uh, were not very enticing. So um, why not cut those out and end up with a pure investment with a volatility below 20? You've seen that a little bit uh, earlier already. That is the performance you would have achieved on average if you would have stayed only invested uh, in a 252 one-year period if volatility was trading below. Everything above 20, you would have neutralized your portfolio. You would have been flat. Yeah? Market direction would have not uh, uh, impacted on your performance. You would have only gone long again in these markets the moment volatility would trade below 20 in the VIX. All together again, the different performance matched against each other. And let's get into the statistics briefly. What we can see here, the S&P on the left again, uh, against the everything below 100 strategy. We've seen on the right, naturally they have to match. Uh, then the performance of the slightly riskier, everything below 30, I want to stay long in the market, still netted an average of 13.48% return. If you compare that against the buy and hold strategy, you already see that uh, your drawdown, the worst portfolio you could have bought, was minus 22%, uh, while the S&P worst portfolio was minus 66%, and you would on average had a performance of roughly 13.5%, uh, just almost twice of what the buy and hold strategy and the S&P would have delivered. And then obviously uh, um, the rainbow uh, trade we want to have in this scenario would have been simply everything below 20, I want to be long, and this would have an average performance of 16.10%. Uh, I've already went through the data with you. Uh, just see the comparison again between green, yellow, and uh, respectively red or gray in this scenario. The buy and hold strategy was in both cases worse in terms of average performance plus maximum drawdown. Even though uh, with the yellow strategy, you might not have picked the lucky portfolio you might have picked with just an S&P uh, buy and hold strategy. However, you've reduced volatility in your earnings massively by following the rule, I don't want to be invested if the market is trading above 30. Um, then one final thing I was interested in, I called the volatility markets that go boo in the night. Obviously, we had uh, uh, an enormous bull run for 30 years in the market, and I was interested if I would have followed the good strategy, the green strategy. Only want to be long if volatility is above 20, uh, below 20, not above 20, below 20, and I want to be neutral every time we are above 20. How would this strategy have performed if I'd always picked the wrong periods? Wrong period is simply I had 7,500 portfolios I could have chosen from over this time period. 
but I always pick the one when the S&P one year later was trading below the day when I bought it. However, I still followed the strategy and said, I want to be only invested if it's below 20 and if we go above 20, I want to be neutral. And the red bars here are these unfortunate 20% when the market traded after one year below uh, uh, the price you bought it for. And that's the average performance if you would have stuck with this portfolio. This is very interesting actually, because we don't know whether markets go up or down. But what we can see, if I've eliminated the additional risk of high volatility markets, that the upticks in this market actually were able to provide me with a reasonable return in this portfolio. You can see here, even in down markets, if I've only focused on the markets that uh, uh, traded after one year below its initial price, I would have still made an average performance of 8.44% against a buy and hold strategy. And uh, obviously it's a subset of the uh, earlier data. So my maximum drawdown would have been the minus 2.62% I have in here. But uh, even in down markets, it is very advisable to have a very close eye on volatility if one follows an investment portfolio to um, get the best out of it. So how can we close that? Obviously, uh, volatility and creativity, a magical, slightly, well, not very transparent crystal ball. I always get the question asked, how would that have looked like if you bought in 1990 and just would have let this strategy rolling on and that is the performance out of this strategy uh, which is just below 500 percent in return while the s p just made a pesky 219 i think percent but hold your horses what you can see here on the screen is something you will not be able to replicate for the simple reason i made an analysis how volatility and performance reacted to each other if you want to trade this approach it's quite different because you don't know how volatility is going to be tomorrow and when to close out the S&P beforehand. Yeah? You would have to divide next day's volatility. And if you incorporate all this into the equation, then your performance doesn't look that nice anymore. However, that's where the creativity comes in. You, own, you don't work only with one indicator. You have a look on macroeconomics. You have a look on technical indicators, the ones you prefer, the ones you think they work. You have a look at uh, uh, historical volatility data. You plug in into your back tests or in your analysis different market scenarios. You're going to say, okay, what would happen if the S&P now shows over the next 30 years performance we have seen uh, over the last 30 years in Japan or Jamaica or anything else? So the ideal is the yellow line which you will probably not be able to achieve because it uh, assumes that you know something even if it's only one day might happen in the future uh, but that's the ideal scenario which represents the different impact volatilities have in these scenarios so be creative use any indicator you can think of do your back tests but this is in a perfect world what you could achieve by following a simple rule don't stay invested when volatility is above a certain level. By the way, you can choose your certain level you want to have in there. Um, if you are interested uh, uh, in further developments or you have questions, please ask them in the question section. I promise I will answer. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, uh, don't give me a thumbs down. And uh, if you th think that might be interesting for somebody else, please share the video. I wish you... All success in trading and I hope I could enlighten you a little bit about volatility if you haven't heard it already before. And I love to end with a quote of Ray Kwok, the founder of McDonald's. Luck is a dividend of sweat. The more you sweat, the luckier you get. Um, stay healthy and I hope I see you soon on this channel. Bye-bye.